Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday Streaming from the Studio Session. It is a beautiful day out, and I am taking a little break from my Enamel Jam project. It's coming along, you know, I've got the wires done, but I thought it might be just fun to spend a Friday. Hey, Peg, <laughs> you, you won this week. You were ready. Welcome to Friday and the stream. So, but anyway, today we're just going to be doing some really fun, simple earrings because as you know, I do make earrings and I sell them in my Etsy store. So I kind of have, we're not gonna do too much. I've got kind of two color palettes that I'm kind of exploring. We'll talk about those in a moment. And yeah, so let's get started. I'm gonna go, I'm just diving right on into it, to the workbench. And you can see, oh look, there down below is the link to the Etsy store. Uh, here's what I have on the workbench today. We have kind of two, I'm gonna bring them a little closer so you can see. This is kind of a newer color palette that I've been exploring. Here's one piece of kind of like these really, really pretty seafoam greens and um, just, I just really am, in, I feel like this is a really beautiful kind of summery palette and I am excited about that. So I've just got these real basic, actually we're not gonna do this pair, but I just wanna see how they look with my standard shapes. We're gonna do a sweet little lotus earrings and pendant right here. And these are the colors that we're going to be using for that. So just to kind of branch out and explore this color palette a little bit more. And then also, you know how much I love rainbow stuff. And this particular, I love this pendant with this really, really vivid yellow and orange. And I have this pair. And so I kind of have been doing a little bit more with these really vivid kind of rainbow hues. And so that being said, uh, this is this particular shape of earring is, I kind of call it my Baroque style earring. Um, you know, I, and I'm using that term a little bit loosely for sure, but I'm gonna be doing, I've got them ready to go. And you can see I've got 24 karat gold wires ready for these, just for a little added luxury. And those are gonna have all of these really pretty rainbow colors in there. So, that that's kind of the plan. So it's just going to be a real late, not a lazy day. Is there a lazy day? Maybe. Um, just going to take it time, take our time. And as I was get, gathering everything together, getting all my colors, I realized that I am totally out. We're going to be using my favorite orange, uh, but look, it's empty. So guess what? We get to start by not just washing, but we're going to grind some lump enamels, <laughs> the excitement, I know. So that's what we're gonna get started with. And then we're gonna do a little washing and hopefully we'll get a color, a layer of color or two on these earrings before the end of the day. But I thought we would finish these, whatever we don't finish today, we'll finish on Tuesday, I promise. So, and get them into the Etsy store. So I think you've seen enough of that Etsy store logo. Please go there and buy something. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move this whole tray. I've got all the other colors. Most of them are pretty much ready to go and washed. We'll have to do a little bit of washing, but you, you knew what this was when you came in. So I'm gonna set them completely out of the way so that we can make some room for grinding and polishing. Not grinding and polishing. I guess it is, it's been a long week, so. We'll set this right over there. Perfect. Get these out of the way. And here we have, let me get the actual sample strip so you can see how interesting. This is the color that we're gonna be grinding. It's one of my, just my favorite oranges. This is an old Thompson orange and it's called Mikado orange. It's just really intense and there are modern oranges that are similar to it but you know this is one of those kind of unicorn colors that I just don't really think there's anything better than this so there you have it 
And it's one that, look at this lump that I have. This lump is amazing. It is made up of, can you even believe that this, these colors, this bit of glass, when heated in the kiln, will turn into this. And there is a whole mess of science behind it involving gold molecules that we're not gonna talk about right this second because we're just gonna admire the majesty. All right, now we're gonna get started. I've blabbed, so we've got, we're gonna take this and we're gonna break it down. And before we get super into it, we're going to get, I do kind of like to put my gloves on because as I get older and, you know, more cognizant that we're not here forever, I feel like a little extra protection because when I do this sifting procedure and I don't wear these gloves, I feel like I'm, I might be absorbing some of it through, I'm gonna take off my watch too. I might be absorbing some of it through my hands, which is not great. So we're gonna put this on and don't worry, I'm putting on my respirator too. So where did I put it? Well, I say respirator, my thing. So what we're gonna do is I have this beautiful mortar and pestle. And I also have, let me get all my things ready before we get too far into it. I've got some sifters. Those are just end caps right here, two end cap sifters. And I've got, let me put them in the right order. We've got 60 mesh, goes into 80 mesh, goes into 100 mesh, goes into 200 mesh. So bigger to thinner. And then I even have a 40 mesh that we're gonna start. So we're gonna, as we're grinding it, we're gonna sift it all the way through these sifters. And I'm gonna tell you right now that 80%, 90% of our effort's gonna be getting it small enough to go through this first sifter. Once you get it through this first sifter, you're pretty much golden. So if you're interested, I do have an entire, almost a brand new video on my Vimeo channel that explains this whole procedure. If the ins and outs, if you have some lump enamel in your collection and you need to know how to break it down and use it, please check out my Vimeo channel and subscribe. In fact, do that anyway. So we've got the end cap here ready to go. I've got this. And then I also have one of these that has like a hole, you'll see why, soon enough. So gotta decide, I don't, you know, it's kind of like the more you try to break down the enamels, the more you try to do, the harder it is. So we're just gonna do, I don't need that much, but I wanna have a little extra because I only really wanna do it once. So how about, should we just do two? Or let's do two little scraps. That's probably will get us far more than we need. So we're gonna start with that. I'm going to put on my it's hard to do with my thing. There we go. Got that going, got my gloves on. And the first thing I want to do is I need to kind of break it down. This is to kind of keep the particles from ending up all over. So I am just going to give it a little break. So you can see I've already broken it up. I actually have to lift up a little bit because I don't want to hit my camera. I like to do is a little tapping. I didn't say this was a fun, actually, you know what? It is a fun procedure. It's part of the project, part of the whole process. So, oh, I need to get my little brush. Ha ha. little brush. Oh, 
Oh yeah, definitely, because it just ends up everywhere. Here's my brush. Oh wait, where's the thing? There it is. Um, just to keep the fines. So we start straight in there. And the more you do this, the less you're going to grind it into the tiniest little bits. Because remember, there's a lot of, there's going to be some that is just ground too fine. So there we go. And I had, I'd forgotten that I needed to grind this. I probably should have done this yesterday, but you know what? It is what it is. Oh, let me see if I can just scooch that over. I can see they're just going a little bit. They're going everywhere. Oh, you know what I remember? One other thing. Let me put some of this back in here. Let me get a little cap. It's easier to do it if I just have a little bit less. I am actually making quite a bit. It's hard to gauge when you're looking at those little sheets how much it's going to turn into. Oh, it's a little bit more, but this will be good because then I won't have to grind this for a while. But if we just do a little bit at a time, it'll just be a lot more magical, in fact. There we go. I can tell, see how much, see it's hard to see because it's kind of white on white. But we'll just do a little bit. At a time. And if you're just joining us, welcome. We're grinding enamels just to get started. Um, this is going to be this really vivid orange color. Look, it doesn't look like it's orange, but it will be orange after it gets fired in the kiln. All right. You know what, that's probably enough to get started for now. You know, I'm going to just put a lid on this because as exciting as this is, oops, I can finish grinding the rest of this later, but I am going to mark it so I don't forget what it is. Mikado. Good old Mikado. Oh, hold on, let me get it. This is a lot of... Every little bit helps. There we go. Mikado. Perfect. We'll put you over there and finish you later. But we still have a little bit more to go. We got to get all of this going. 
But again, this will be enough to get these earrings done for sure. A little bit more. Well, hey, Margaret. Good afternoon. TGIF. Oh, God, I should stop saying that. That's the dumbest. It's just that it does kind of feel, because the weather's so nice, it feels like a good Friday around here. There we go. Let's put this over here. And I bet that will go through. There we go. And trust me, we're gonna have to wipe down this whole area. And now I'm just going to put the lid on it and give this a little shake. And now we're gonna work on getting it all the way through our sifters. Actually, we're doing pretty good. So we got, this is the 60 mesh. We're going to a 200 mesh total. Just going to put that, I'm going to call that one done as well. And now we've got this 80 mesh. A little bit more. Oops. Hold on, I see two flecks of red from another color. I want to pull out. a brush and a little water. Yeah. Wrong glasses. Ah, yeah, see two little flecks of pink enamel. Ugh, and then I have introduced water. That's not great. We're almost there. I see another fleck. Yeah, I, these particular, get out of there. There you go. You can see they're labeled red because I used them for red and I was like, well, Mikado's, maybe it's not red, it's orange, but whatever fleck of color that's contaminated, I don't want that in my orange, so. If you see something, just pick it out. There we go. And you know, the, I've got like just, they're staring me down. I've got like 20 colors of lump enamels that I need to grind and you know, it's, it's a bit of a chore, but it's totally worth it. 
because I do find that the lump enamels, especially with these old vintage colors, they have, you know, you get really beautiful, clear results. I am, but there's a little added work and then this is the, the price you pay for that. There we go. You know what? That'll be enough. Let's just put you in there. All right, we just have one more sifter to get through because this is what we're keeping. So just one more little. Oh, where'd you go? Here you are. Oh, I feel like I just put a lot of red flex. Yeah, I should have not used this particular batch of sifters. That seems okay. Let's just see how close we are. This piece is bothering me. Well, hey, Narato. Wait, sorry, Kanchana. Yes. Luckily, this is the only color we have to grind today. So it's not a big grind. It's not a big grinding day, but it is a small grinding day. There we go. Um, here we go. This should do it. I bet this will be it. You know what? I'm going to call it. Okie doke. Let's cover that and give it one last little. Sifty sift. Should be good. Okay, now let me just clean this piece of paper. We're gonna put, I've already prepped our little jar. It's not gonna be a ton in here because I didn't do all of it, but it should be just enough to do our project. You can see we've got our 200 meshes, what's in here. And this is finer than that. We're going to save both, but I'm going to grab the 200 mesh first. There we go. And put it in this container. Oh, you little bass. Or, you know, <laughs> I saw a fleck of, there we go. Put this right in here. There we go. Beautiful. And ready to go. Now this we're saving. We're not using this today. This is finer than 200. You could use it for paint. You could grind it finer. You could use it for really delicate shading, but we're not going to be using it today. So I am going to be putting it in here. So whenever I need some really finely ground, Mikado orange. I know where it is.
There we go. So we're going to set this aside because we don't need it. I will go put these by the, these need to get washed out, which I'll do later, but I'm going to set them by the sink. And then before I really move on with anything else, I'm going to give everything kind of a wipe down because there's probably a little bit, I was kind of rushing everything. Um, L. Lifron, Life Efron says, how arts are your glass? Oh, how large are your glass containers? They're very small. Um, these are, aren't they, look how cute they are. These are actually for, um, I think they're probably half an ounce and therefore, um, I got them on Amazon. They're for cosmetics. Um, and this is probably also half an ounce. So they're probably similar. All right, I'm gonna go put this stuff away. We'll wipe down and then we'll actually get started with the fun stuff of the day, I promise. All right, you guys stay over here. And let me just get some water. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Here we go. Let me get this. Oh yeah. I don't normally do grinding at my table like this. I usually do it at like the big table over there because it's easier to keep clean. So I do want to really wipe everything down because these little scraps of glass will just get embedded in my elbows and not feel good. There we go. One more. There we go. Now we are ready. Now I can take this off. Ugh. That is off and I'm a Rowan too, just subscribed. Thank you. I am Rowan, Rohan. <laughs> what should I call you? Thank you for the subscription. So now we are, now we have like this empty area. We're gonna kind of pull our colors back in. I've pulled, these colors have been washed and they need a little freshening up. I'm gonna pull everything that I need and bring it over here. Oh, Isabel, what a great name. Isabel, thank you. I'm gonna turn off my Vimeo link because you've all learned a reprieve from the Vimeo link. So I have to wash this chartreuse. We're gonna bring the colors over and those are for the cools and then the rainbows because I can't just work on one color thing at a time. It's boring. So it's so much more fun to do kind of multiples. And oh yeah, here's our orange that we just ground. So we've got that. I'm just gonna set these right up here for now. And we have to actually wash four colors. We've got these kind of green colors and I know we just ground this lump, but now we have to wash it. So, and you're like, why are we washing it? It is because even though we did sift it, um, there's still lots of different bits of powder in here that will make our enamels cloudy and we don't want that. And I'm just gonna actually do, I'm not gonna do the full Monty, we're gonna do just the easy peasy, light and breezy wash. And so four colors, four cups, four lids, I'm gonna label them 
and I can see that these three have been sifted and this has not been sifted. See how powdery it looks? So this is gonna take more washing. Yeah, you know what you're gonna do. N46. And these are all my favorite Nino Mia colors. Nino Mia. Greens. N46. Light. Green. We'll set that right there. We have N37, chartreuse. I love chartreuse. This is probably one of my favorite colors of all times. So that's this color right here. It's just so vivid. Love it. 37. Chartreuse. Here's our Mikado. I love the old Thompson enamels because they all have really good names. Like there, I don't have to worry about the number, honestly, because there is only one Mikado. Um, and then N36 pale yellow green. Yeah, but there's probably like 10 pale yellow greens. So N36 pale yellow green. So that is lovely. And actually, you know what? I'm going to pivot this. There we go. So I have the stuff I'm working on over there. The next thing I need is some distilled water, probably a nice cup of distilled water and one cup for the dirty water. So let's pour some of this in. Nice clean water. And we'll start, you know what, we'll start with that Mikado because why not? Let me get a little scoop. And I don't even need all of this because I'm, I've got one little piece, like there's the tiniest amount of Mikado in here. So I'm just going to get, honestly, about this will, this will probably be just a little bit more. That will be plenty to do this project. So again, we'll just do them one at a time because I've got my pipette. And you can see how cloudy that water is. We wanna just pour off the cloudy water. Oh, I also have, I think, two videos just about washing your enamels. So, Bilingual Proper is now following. Well, welcome, Bilingual. What is your other language? Is one of them English? go. But you can see the pre-sifted colors go pretty fast. So there we go. Perfectly washed, ready to use. We're just going to put a lid on it. <laughs> put it because we're not getting to it just yet. I'm going to set that right there. And you know what? I'm going to mark Mikado. Sometimes I mark my lids, you know, just because. All right, that's good. Let's do my second favorite color of the day, which is my chartreuse. I like this color. I'm gonna wash a little bit more than I know it because I know I'm gonna be using it all week. So it's my favorite green. It being my favorite green and all. Put that there. You can see these colors are easier to kind of see what's going on. And guess what, we get to wash these too, but those will go pretty fast. I'll probably wash them as I'm about to use them, so. There 
There we go. One more. There we go. Let's put a little lid on you. You know what? I am going to mark these chartreuse and 37. Yeah, there are, I'm going to say I have seven chartreuses. So the number is important. And let's do this one, the pale yellow green, because it's not been sifted. You'll see how much more we have to do with for the washing. I'm going to have to grab more of it because we're going to be washing more of it away. This is a very, very kind of a, just as perfect seafoam green. Here we go. Now I have a lot. That's going to take a while to wash. So make sure we're good. But you can see definitely cloudy. We'll probably do more washing right before we use it, but that's good enough for now. What did we decide this was? Oh, pale yellow, N36. Yeah, this is N37. This is N36. N36. Ready to go. And then our final color and 46 light green. Well, hey, Glass and Fun. Glass and Fun says, good morning. First time in ages, been awake early enough to catch the stream live. Where are you, Glass and Fun again? So you must be more west because east of us would be later in the day. That's a good amount. A little bit more. Oh yeah, New Zealand, fun. Oh. That is amazing. Yeah, you can see how much faster. That's almost perfectly clear. That's a beautifully sifted color, but I'm still gonna wash it. Sorry, there's like something happening outside. There we go. Perfect. And you know, since I was labeling the lids, I might as well label this one. That is N46. Perfect. And so those are washed. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to be using, this is the N55, which I don't have. I don't have the sample. It's a very pale blue. I'm going to be using it as a foundation. So while I'm sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and grab some and wash a little bit more because I bet I need a little bit more of this N55. Another Nino Mia color. It is a Nino Mia day. A Nino Mia day is a good day. So let me, oh, let me get some yellow too. We'll do both. Oh, 4.30 a.m. Whew, 
sorry, I just read that last little bit, 4.30 a.m. in New Zealand. That should be a good start. So there's that. And you know, also gonna be using a little bit of this yellow as a foundation. I don't have the sample, but you know, while I'm just sitting here doing nothing, um, let me get some yellow, very pale, bazoop. And yes, Nino Mia. Oh, remind me, I have to turn the kiln on. And we'll wash these as we're about to use them. So I'm gonna put this, this is our dirty water. So I'm going to set that aside. And what do we wanna start with? I'm gonna get, let's start with getting some fresh water and turning the kiln on. There we go. We're gonna start, you know what? with the rainbow. Let's start with the rainbow. Let me pull this and this and this. And I'm gonna to have to take a moment and let's get our, we don't need these. So we're gonna move these out of the way for now. But what I wanna do is Let's get the kiln, sorry, the microscope. Hold on, the microscope is coming over. There's the microscope. Helps me to see what's going on. And then also I've got the microscope camera as well. So let's just see where we are here. And let us go to the Let's see how the kiln cam is doing. Good. You know what? Let me turn that kiln on while I'm staring at it. All right. We're going to set the kiln to, what do we got? 1400, which is seven, it's not 776, 750 something. I don't, I've lost my thing. There we go. That'll take a couple minutes to get up to temperature. And now let's see what's going on. On We've got the workbench and let's turn on the microscope. There we go. We've got our microscope. That's good. And now we're ready. We are, we've got our little, look at the color isn't quite, look how vivid that color is. It's gonna be nice. I don't know why I thought I needed, oh, I do need the blue. So with this, I've got, these are 24 karat gold wires here. You can see them and they have been fired in place. And before I start throwing enamels in here, I just want to kind of hold them 
sideways and see if any of these wires, see if they're standing up, stand, sticking out in any weird way. I'm going to use my fingers to make sure that everything seems to be in place. There we go. And everything seems good. They stick out just a little bit, but that is just fine. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is find my tweezers, zoop, and make sure that if anything needs to get pinched or you can't do much scooching here, but we could make sure that these wires, let's see if we can see, just make sure that everything is in the right spot. Because now is your opportunity. If you don't like a wire, you can pluck it off, redo it, stick it down again. There we go. Like that. Same thing goes over here. That seems good. Scooch you. There we go. So we've got that. What are the gauge of your silver pieces for the base? Well, they are 20 gauge. And 20 gauge, so I <laughs> have on my cheat sheet, is 0.812 millimeters. That's the depth of, because it's two pieces. Remember that I've, I've got these sawn out and fused in place. So the depth that I have to work with, we'll just call it 0.8 millimeters deep. So, and again, if you're interested in how I make those, hold on, I'm throwing it back up. The, oh, hold on, I don't have it. Oh, Vimeo, there we are. There's the Vimeo, I've got tutorials about how to make exactly how to make these. So go there and subscribe if you want to learn how to make these bases. Um, we'll make them eventually. You know, it's kind of whatever I'm doing in my studio. I have done, I think I made these in the studio a couple weeks ago on Vimeo. So there we go. So everything looks good. I'm ready to put my thing. There we go, circle selfie. Vimeo is out. So we're kind of ready to get these going. Let's see which one is that. That's the one on the right. There we go. And before I do that, I'm kind of thinking about my colors. Um, especially, I'm, I'm really making myself crazy here because these three colors don't love silver in any way. Look how pretty these colors are. Especially even this purple. I even picked a purple that's ridiculous to use. Most like 99.9% .9 of all purples are so beautiful on silver. But this one, look at this little edge right here. Right here. You can see where it touches the silver directly. It's just like gross. But when it's like perfectly protected, this is a magical purple. It just glows in a way that a lot of purples can be a little bit flat, not this one. So, but that being said, um, I've got one layer of glass down here. These one, these colors are fine. They are just like workhorses of, we've got our vi vivid yellow, gorgeous, our beautiful greens, lovely, no problems there. Um, you know, but then our troubled children over here. Um, so I wanna get one more coat of, I'm gonna actually put down a layer of yellow all the way through. Let me look at my drawing. I'm going to do yellow, a yellow base that goes all the way up through here. And then I will put down a little bit of, I want to do blue maybe here. Because I don't want to do yellow under this purple because that won't look that good. And then the same thing goes here, a little blue, a little blue whatever I can put my green and I'll put my greens here because those are lovely. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So let me grab my yellow and I'm going to do a little wash. I just used this 
color yesterday, quite literally, so it's pretty clean, but I'm gonna give it a quick wash. So I'm gonna use this as a base. We've got that. And then I'm also, we've got the blue that I just washed. We're gonna use that as a base. And then we just need our greens. Uh, those are, because those are just going to go straight down. Yes, kiln is on. That is good. And where's our other greens? Oh, N37, we washed it, it's ready to go. And then our dark green is right here. Let's see what's going on with you. Looks a bit ragtaggy. This looks okay. Dump you over here. That should be fine. There we go. So I've got all the colors I want to use right here. Get these out of the way. Avocado, a little piece of paper towel for that. And then finally, what brush, I, what brush do I want to use? Got to put on my brush selection glasses. And, oh, oh, I don't have this light on. Maybe that will help. There we go. I'm gonna pick a good, this, oh, hold on, this brush is, this one is the one that wants to. There's the winner of the brush thing. Let's get you out of the way. So I'm just going to put down my base coat of the yellow. Don't need that. So let's see. We'll start with the blue on the inside, and this is where the purple is going to be. So I'm just put a little bit of this blue here. thin coat. A little bit right there. So it's not going to really look all that good until we start getting the the real colors in place, but should be enough. And while I'm sitting there, let's get you, let's get your blue coat over here. We're going to kind of tag team these. A little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much. And then look at my design. That's going to be a yellow dot. So yellow in there. Get our vivid yellow right in here. Don't want to go too, actually we can go as thick as we want in the center because it's going to be yellow. Where you really just want it to be a nice thin coat around because now it's going to be going yellow to that orange. I don't want to run out of space. A 
right about to here. And then we'll do more blue up there, which seems so strange, but we're doing base coats. I haven't done this design in these colors, so it's, it's anyone's guess how these turn out. we go. What are we doing over there in the center? Yellow. Well, I think we kind of want orange. I'm going to put a little bit in here too because we want that Mikado. And this is going to really, you know, putting this really vivid yellow under that Mikado is going to like it's going to be eye popping. So there we have that. Let's see what we have. Over here. And we're going to do the same thing. Nice and thin. Let's get you too. A little bit of water. Let's drop that. Perfect. Oh, there's Clicky. The kiln's up to temperature. Clicky says hello. We're not quite ready. We're going to do a little bit of blue on the top. We'll get the green in, totally in place as is because that can just happen. And you can't be afraid to like put these base coats down. It really does make a big difference. A little bit right there. Especially. I think honestly the wild card for this pair of earrings is not actually the pinks or the oranges. It's going to be that crazy purple, which might, might end up biting me in the butt because it is just one of those purples that I always like. Do I really want to use this purple? But it's so pretty. But on the other hand, it's like I'm just using the littlest, the smallest amount. Hold on, what is, no, that's fine, that looks okay. There we go. Bloop, doop, doop. Now we're just gonna do greens. Let's see. Just. Now we're gonna do true greens. And I'll start at the bottom here. Oops, excuse me. Get some of that water out of there. Start with the lighter. Fill these in. Just a 
a bit. I'm going to do all of them at the same time. Let's just make our lives easier. And then a little bit up here. Well, you know, I'm going to go darker up there. So let's get our chartreuse and 37. Fill the rest of this in. And these are so close that they just pretty much blend themselves. My favorite, my favorite kind. There we go. A little dollop. And a little dollop. Green there. Now we're going to scooch and get a little bit of the green up here. A little bit of the green up here. And then we've got our dark green. There we go. Make sure we can see it. not to get it where we don't want it. I'm going to get some just right up there. Just a little not nibble of it right here. There we go. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to do a tiny amount of blotting because I can see some of that green went into my blue. So, I, and it's going to be easier to pull out if I've blotted it. There we go. Oh, hold on, I need. You go there. Let's see if I pulled it out. And I'm just going to scooch that green out of there. You just get back into your little area, dude. Might even, oops. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. Let me put one more little drop of the, the blue. This brush is a little too new, which is good and bad. It's great for getting into the... Oh, did you see what I just did? No, not on my watch. Get back in there, buddy. There we go. I knew this green was going to be a troublemaker. There we go. Let's get the green. Come on, you're done. You just go over there and dry. I'm tired of your shenanigans. There we go. And you know what? We're going to start with our little dollop of green right there. There we go. Just a little bit. <laughs> the little bleep up here and there. Are you talking about Clicky, the kiln? Or is it, oh, or am I blooping too much? Am I blooping? Hold on, I see it fleck. You know what? I'm going to.
you know, it's nice to do small projects like this. It's very relaxing. Okay, there we go. We've got our base coat and I know it looks weird because there's no rainbow colors on there, but the rainbow colors will come in the next round, round two. So I'm gonna blot some of this moisture, wick some of this moisture up, and then I'm gonna go put this under the lamp. These are ready for drying. I'm gonna let them dry for a couple minutes, and while we let these dry, I'm going to get started on the sea foam. Sea foam colors are next. So I'm just gonna walk these over. Oh, I need to find a trivet too. I'm gonna walk over, I'll be right back. Although the yellow, you know, I'm like, maybe I should just make these yellow. Put those right there, you dry. All right, so next up on the docket are, we got another set of these. Same design, silver wires. And not these colors, these colors are the rainbow colors. You guys are going away. Where are my glasses? Here we are. And I'm going to turn, tech, just momentarily turn off the microscope because I need to kind of think about, all right, so we're not, we're done with these for now. You guys hang out over there. We're gonna bring these friends over and I've got to do a little thinking. There's a small amount of thinking that has to happen got these colors and honestly I just want this out of the way for now Blah, go away sir I'm just gonna think all right so we don't need this green but we need let me get all my colors 931 lump that's this I'm gonna wash them as I go hold on I gotta get a fresh actually we'll just get a empty one of these I'm gonna do our little mini washes so, and, oh, look at that. I might have to get some fresh. Really? That doesn't bode well. Well, that might be just, that might be all right. You know what? We'll get one more use out of you. Scoot you down. Doesn't thrill me, because that was a lump enamel and I don't, Shouldn't have, I probably left it. I probably didn't let it dry out thoroughly before I put that cap on the last time. But what you're gonna do? All right, so we've got that color ready to go. Nine two ninety five turquoise lump. Oh yeah, we. I need to wash this. I need to get a little cup. Yeah, that's what this is. This is happening. Two ninety five. Gosh, you know how many turquoises there are? There's probably 30 turquoises. Turquoise, and they're all slightly different. They're all beautiful. This one is particularly nice. This one's really nice. This is kind of has a, a really warm, it's warm. It's not too green, not too blue. It's just that really nice, sweet, a lot of the turquoises tend to look a little bit too green or kind of grayed out. This one is just perfection. So let's get a little bit of this in our cup. That should be honestly enough. We can always wash more. So we've got that. You know what, what's gonna happen is when I get all these washed, we're probably just gonna go ahead and fire that other pair. Get, you know, keep things moving forward. Oh, 
whenever I had, um, where was I? I was at ECU doing a presentation and a demo. And the, I had this one person was like, oh, I, I, I'd love to do more enamels, but I hate washing. And I was like, well, <laughs> maybe enamels aren't, well, maybe transparent enamels aren't your jam. So we got that one is good. Let's get our N48. Technically this is a green, but it's very blue. Has a, it plays so well with these. This is a great co color combo. Love it. So we are, it's kind of more of a pure, ugh, it's fine. It's a very neutral, not, not warm like the apples or the chartreuses. Neither too dark nor too light. We'll see. I'm not loving these little flecks. It's been sitting around a little bit too long, probably. So let me give it a good. I think that'll be fine. That's good. We've got that. And then these, I think, are the ones we just washed 46, 36, 46. Good to go. 36. Boom. Good to go. Oh, yes, I agree. Washing is the med meditative part of it. And I, it's kind of, it gets everything primed and it gets your brain ready to do some enamel. And we've got one more color to wash. S4, I believe this is a Hirasawa color. Also a Japanese enamel. Very pretty. All right, so we got all our colors ready. Plus, honestly, we're gonna be doing some foundational work on this one as well with this and then also the very pale yellow. So these are ready, but you know what? I wanna go ahead and fire that pair of earrings. So let's go back to the kiln cam and do it. Let's do it. Kiln cam, again, it's set for 1400 Fahrenheit which is what, 750-ish? I have to look it up, Celsius. Don't quote me on that. And we've got our pieces are dry and ready to go in. I'm gonna set them right here. Let's do it. All right, so might as well get a little closer. Not much to see, but you might as well enjoy. Oop, let me go to the zoom. There we are. You just enjoy the view there. And while that's cooking, cooking, while that is firing, I'm gonna have a sip of water. Do we have? Oh no, I was going to say, I don't have a circle. I don't have, that. Let us, and we'll probably pull it out just when it gets back up to 1400. Let's have a little look. Not anywhere near done, but we don't want to wander too far away or forget. All right, now I'm going to look. Getting closer, getting closer. Click. 
clicky. You think it's done? Okay. Clicky says it's done. Let's pull you out. And I am going to go ahead and get you off the hot plate so you cool down a little faster. You can see the colors all look, always look a little strange. Let's see if we can go see that zooming in. Oop, this way. They'll warm up to the correct. There we are. We'll keep our eye on them. They'll take a couple minutes to cool down and then we'll get another coat on them. But before we do that, let's come back to the workbench. Workbench is where we want to be. Now, while those are cooling, let's go ahead and get our first coat on these guys. And yeah, got to bring Mr. Mr. Microscope back over because I can't see him completely. There we go. There's that. Let's turn on Microscope. There we go. I'm going to make that bigger. Hold on, everybody. <laughs> Check that out. A little bit bigger. And maybe me, this could be a little bit smaller. There we go. How exciting. So now with these, I know you're like, why these Colors are all nice and cool. You say they play well with silver. What are you doing doing your foundational coats? Why not just dive on in and do those aquas and whatevers? Well, I'll tell you. Well, no, it's not. I was going to say, oh, it's a secret. It's not a secret. Um, I have, if you've done enamels and you have done enamels for enough time and you have been working on getting your enamels to have really, really good clarity and transparency, you'll notice that the warm blues and blue and yellow and warm greens, I guess yellowish, bluish greens, we'll just say aquas, tend to have kind of a delayed silver reaction, which is they look beautiful in the samples because you can see the samples just look perfect gorgeous, no problems. But then about four or five firings in, you start noticing a little bit of brown speckling. Um, and you're like, oh, it's always so disappointing. So to mitigate problems on down the road, we're gonna put a nice base of a perfectly friendly blue, pale blue, which will just add a little spice to the party. Why do I have these colors? If I keep them on my right, I won't knock them over. Thank you. There we go. So, but again, before I get too far into it, let me make sure that nothing's wildly sticking up. Sorry, where's my, there we are. Make sure nothing's sticking up too much. That one looks fine. This one looks fine. Let's just have a quick look. And what are we doing here? Let me grab my drawing. What's, what is actually happening with these? So we've got here is our little drawing, very sophisticated. And so, so I don't really wanna put the yellow. Do I wanna put the yellow? I'm going to, let me think about it. Yellow. You know, I don't really want to put this pale yellow because it's so much more vivid. I don't really want to push it into the yellow, the land of yellows, because there's so much kind of more sea foaming. I'm going to grab some just plain flux and I'm going to use Sawyer number three. So it's, I'm just going to have to bear with me while I grab that. Do I have them right here? No, it's in the cabinet. Let me just grab it. It'll just take a second. I promise it's worth it. Worth it for me anyway. Alrighty, Sawyer Flux. Sifted. Give me... Oh, here it is. 
There we go. You know, it's about making choices. And I'm just going to quite literally make the tiniest amount because I don't need much. Oh, that's too much. I bet it. Uh -huh. You know what? That's fine. This will just take a moment. So. Are you over there? So we've got that, and we're going to put you pretty much over this center thing, and then we're going to do baby blue, baby blue, baby blue, baby blue. Perfect. That's what we're going to do. You guys get out of the way. So. Let's just, and they're alternate. Are they the same? Yeah, they are the same on both sides. I'm just talking to myself. So we're going to start here, right there. And this isn't going to look like much since it's clear enamel, but I do want to make sure it's a nice even and thin coat. Need to fuss with that wire too. Do I want to trim that wire down? Yes. Mm. Doesn't throw me, but I'm going to do it. Hmm. Give it to me. Are we cut? There we go. Hold on. It's like just a little too much wire there. Put you over there. Press you down. That's better. Now back to what we were doing, which was some exciting clear enamel. And you know what? I think we're just going to work on, we'll get this on. Then we'll go see our rainbow. I can't believe it's 1.30. We, we've been at it for an hour and a half. And it's always funny, like even to this day, like I've done enamels like a hundred years. I'm, 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 I'm an elf. I, I've done enamels for a hundred years and I still wildly underestimate the amount of time it takes to do things. So all right, so that's gonna be clear. This is gonna be a nice layer of clear. Probably could have just sifted this, but it doesn't matter. A little bit there, a little bit there. It's hard to see where it's going. And I honestly want to care, be careful in these real tiny areas that I don't put too much that I run out of room to put my actual color because that, that's kind of the danger here. And sometimes when I know I'm going to have to put a barrier down, it's almost better to start with a thicker, maybe an 18 gauge top piece, but you know, shoulda, coulda, that's going to be blue. That's fine. Just a little bit, a bit, a little bit. Okay, doesn't look like much, I know. Let's get you in here too, and then we'll do the blue. Too 
much. a little bit. A little bit of this. Come on, buddy. All right, that's good. That's good. That's going to be blue, blue, blue. A little. What do we decide? A little bit here, and then we'll get a little blue in. There we go. Now let me just add a little bit of blue. Boop, boop, boop. Hello, baby blue. You're going to go a little bit right here. Wherever I didn't put the clear, I'm going to put a little bit of blue as my base. I think that is, you know, that's fine. So it doesn't look like much, but let's get it on the other side. A little bit of that. A little bit there. Here. Smooth it out. Right here. There we go. All right, so now, <laughs> I don't know why I'm whispering. Um, we're gonna just let these dry. And then, while these are drying, we can go get the fun, co the fun coat of rainbow. Rainbow fun coat is up next. We'll even switch out these I bet you guys, there we go. We've got our yellow bases on. You guys hang out under the light. Perfect. Let's see where we are with our bases. Woohoo! So we have our, remember these guys, these have been fired. Let me turn off the microscope. There we go. These have a nice, luxurious base coat of vivid yellow. Mm, honestly, makes me be like, oh, maybe we should just make yellow earrings because this is such a vivid, pretty color. It's like a daffodil yellow almost. So, but that's not what we're doing. That's, we, we're gonna stick with the plan of rainbow. So we've got our beautiful base down. Let's get our sea foams out of the way. And we have a couple other friends to bring to the party here. So we've got, oh yes, our Aoki, this color. Look at this vivid. This is gonna be more orange because we're putting it over that vivid yellow. So, mm, but yummy, could eat that. And then remember our real orange. So let's do a quick little wash on the Aoki color. 
Please be okay. Aoki. A is it is Aoki? A okay? Look at me making enamel puns. Aoki is a brand of enamels that went out of business a long time ago. And they are so hard to find. I bought this and this particular shade of fuchsia is kind of the unicorn color. I got it on eBay. I literally, I stalked that eBay thing and I got in and I just, I was, I was prepared to wildly overpay for it. And that's how I got the four ounces of this particular Aoki color. So I think it's 105B. Gorgeous. But there are, you know, just cause you, oh, it's gorgeous. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. All right. So we got that. We've got our vivid purple. We're going to do a quick wash. Well, and actually there were two, like it was the same seller sold one batch and I, I felt like I wildly overpaid for it. And I was just being, you know, you know how things go on eBay. You think you got it and then somebody swoops in at the last minute and it, you just, Oh, I'm still salty about it. But then she did another batch. And so I was like laser focused on that. And I, I just sat there and I just kept refreshing the page, refresh, refresh, refresh. Um, and I think the other person dropped the ball because I got it. So boy, this is an exciting story. I know. So, oh, hey, oh, I'm so glad. Glass and Fun says she's loving the earrings that she won and she is wearing them every week. Thank you. We'll have to, we'll definitely do another giveaway in the fall. And just so you know, to be eligible for giveaways, you can either subscribe to the Vimeo channel, prefer preferably the Vimeo channel, or subscribe to, what is this place called? Twitch, the Twitch. So now we're ready. We've got all our base coats and I'm going to just start in the center. Let me get everything going. See, the blue out of the ways. Thank you. Oh, I should probably put my microscope back on. There we go. I feel like, do I need, are we out of focus? The microscope. I wish I had a slightly higher resolution. Oop, there we go. And always is a little dark. Considering there's like 10 lights focused on this thing, how on earth is it so dark? But there we go, that, that is what it is. So we're gonna start here in the center with our vivid yellow. We're gonna start with yellow. And I'm gonna do these one at a time just because I wanna kinda of do the blending. So we've got our nice yellow straight in the middle. Same thing goes over here. Then we've got going into our Mikado and it's gonna look weird because these colors will not show up until they've been fired. So it makes it challenging. There's our vivid orange. So it makes it challenging to do the blending. You have to make sure you don't get it where you don't want it. I'm gonna blend as I go. So we've got Mikado. All the way to about, I'm going to do right about to here. I want to have room to blend in. Let's pull that into the yellow. I 
think that should be enough. I don't love this wire hanging out like that, but it's fine. And then we got the pink's going to do that, so a little bit more. Okay. Now we're going to pull our Aoki Vivid Hot Pink. I know it doesn't look hot pink, but it will be hot pink. Trying to blend it. And we'll do more blending in the next. We don't have a lot of space, but Aoki is going to go here. Aoki. And I'm going to, what time is it? We've got just enough time to get these fired and see how this looks. Okay, so Aoki Hot Pink. I'm going to kind of then, you know, while I, I'm going to tag team these just because I don't want to forget exactly how I did things. So we're going to scooch it over just like that. Get. because I'm like, I have to remember how far did I take this yellow? Because we want these earrings to match for the most part. And they're all unique little. There we go. There we go. Now we're gonna pull, oh, did that wire travel around? Not loving it, hold on. There's not much we can do about it. Oh, no. Okay, good. Whew. Did this one? Can we move it? No. That's all right. It's not attached, strangely enough. But that's okay. We got that. And now we've got our... Vivid orange, hold on, let me put a little bit more yellow. All right, now our vivid orange, Mikado. I always, after I've used this color, because look, this is vivid orange, and hold on, where did I put my, oh, and then so this is vivid orange and this is clear enamel. So I tend to set it far away so I don't accidentally use it as thinking it's a clear enamel. I've done that. I've had students do that. It's not, it's not a wonderful experience to realize after you fired it that you just covered your entire piece with hot pink or dark orange. You only, <laughs> I'm going to say you only do it once, but that's not true. I probably... Um, and there's not much you can do. Well, you know, there's, you know, there's always things to be done, but sometimes the best approach is to just laugh about, you know, have a good laugh at yourself and tell yourself you're not going to do it again. Okay, so there's the hot. So we went a little bit farther. There we go. There is the vivid orange. Now, our vivid pink. Oh, Archam asked, how is my glass? How is my Archam piece coming? It's coming, it's coming. Um, the wires are pretty much done. 
and I'm not even going to show it to you today because um, I'm taking a little mental holiday from it. Uh, over the, I'm planning on st getting the. I still have to s actually start gluing the wires in place. Well, I have to. I'm going to do that just solo. I'm probably not going to do that on Twitch because it's a little too stressful. But we'll see. I'm going to it's probably I've budgeted 2 days for gluing wires onto the piece. We'll see how it goes. So we've got that next up. Oh, uh, while I have that Mikado, where did I have the Mikado? Here we go. I'm going to put some Mikado here in the center. I know I'm just I'm a little bit more water. I'm starting to get a little dry. There we go. A little water. There we go. But I'll finish. I will definitely, for good or bad, it'll be finished. Hopefully. For good. Hopefully it'll be good. Um, I think, you know, it's funny. It's like the thing that's stressing me out is just I have to figure out I got some um, the different kind of glue what's it called it's over there the lily root powder and I'm going to use that as my glue and I've never used it and I'm a little nervous about it so I'm going to have to just kind of practice with it first and maybe call my friend Amy Roper Lyons and have her walk me, you know, walk me away from the cliff of despair about it because she uses it for her beautiful, I'm sure. Um, you've seen her wonderful work. She does the Picajour. Oh, just amazing. Amazing. So, there we go. Boop, boop, boop. I want a touch of. Hot pink, hold on, hot pink, hot pink. See, I'm talking too much. A little hot pink right in this area and also right in this area. Same thing on this. It's the little and here. That's good. So now all right, we're done with those two colors. For now, we got to throw our purple in. Throw another ticking time bomb into this mix. This is going to be, this is just literally, we'll see how this works. This purple is going to go up here. It's just a nice, let's see if it wants to blend. Hold on, I see a piece of errant foil that I want to address. Oh, there you go. What is this? Mm, I don't want to I'll address it by acknowledging the imperfection of There we go. There's our little purple. And then purple is also going where? Oh, in the center of this piece. Let's get you in. A little bit of the purple here. A little purple here. Maybe not, maybe not so much purple. Let's a little bit less. And then I want to see if I can get a tiny nibble of purple right here without messing it up. That 
That's good. That's the purple. Let's get the purple over here and then a green and then deal with just some days come on buddy what are you doing there we go so I was sticking up I gotta clean a little bit. Some of this hot pink has expanded into the green area, which probably will be fine because that's a really dark green. All right. Oh yeah, I know Lily Root is, it's gonna be fine. It's just the unknown, the fear of the unknown. I'm also probably, <laughs> I'm definitely going to email um, a, uh, um, uh, Mary Lee Ray. Mary Lee Ray will also, I'm sure, offer some sage advice. But yes, yeah, always the fear. It's like, is it going to burn away? What if it doesn't? Oh gosh, what if I use too much? Blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm usually a lot faster at this, you know. I mean, well, let's just say slightly faster. There we go. Okay, we got our purple. That's good. Now we just have to do a little green. Let me, I see one speck of purple that went awry. There we go. Go back in there. Let's get some green on there, I swear. And then we can move forward. We've got green, 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 and go up there too. Let's get our medium green. Give it to me, there we go. All right, now let's just get one little bit of the dark green. Yes, the N43. Thank you.
But yeah, people are starting to send in their final submissions for the enamel art jam. I'm not sure how many I'm gonna get. I feel like I kind of dropped the ball a little bit. Just, you know, I traveled too much. I didn't push it. You know, I, I think like 200 people signed up to participate in the enamel art jam, which is great. And I'm interested to see, you know, gosh, if we get 30 people finishing, I think I'll feel pretty good about it, to be honest. But that's on me because I didn't really, I wasn't as great of a cheerleader about it this time around. So I just have been, you know, stretched a little bit thin. So please finish. If you're, if you're, if you're doing it, please finish it or don't worry about it. It's fine. And also I've been getting the, the sad emails of like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to participate. And I'm like, it's fine. You know, it's not, um, I am not here to be like, oh, you're, trust me. I'm going to be in on the wire finishing my piece for sure. And if I weren't in charge with it, if I wasn't like, if it wasn't my project, maybe I wouldn't have found the time either. So... Getting all of this in there. Hope it's not too dark. We'll find out. Oh, I need to put a dollop of yellow. Sorry, we got one more dollop of yellow in here too. That's a good start. Let me get one dollop of green here that I forgot about. See right there. And then two dollops of yellow. There's one dollop. Come on over here, buddy. Let's get, get you a dollop of yellow. And a dollop of yellow right there. Perfect. Now we'll do a little blotting. We'll fire, remember, remember that other pair of earrings we're working on. We'll fire those. There we go. All right, so I know that it looks kind of funny, but We'll see if we get a hot pink and a vivid orange out of here. I'm going to, let me turn off the micro Oh, Let's have a look. They look real good. I'm gonna go put these under the lamp. We're gonna turn the kiln cam on and fire the bases of the other one. So let's head over to the kiln cam. There, oh yeah, pointing at nothing. Good, good. All righty. Remember these, we're gonna let these dry under the lamp. Let's back up, zoom out, there we go. We're going to put these in. Let me get one more. That'll be fine. Just to put these on. course. There we go. So you guys are under the light. Let's get these in. Hold on. My arm is going to knock the camera. Let's back off a little bit. I'm feeling a little choked. There we go. All right, yeah, same thing. I bet by the time this temperature reads 1400 again, we'll be ready to pull out. We've got over here, we've got our pieces drying under that warm, sweet halogen lamp. Oh, here are all the enamels that I need to grind from lump. If anyone wants to come to my studio and do that for me, I would 
not pay you, but I would be very appreciative. <laughs> and so there is that. So hang out for a minute. We'll chill out. Oh, I gotta wash those things. And then we'll fire both things separately and see what's going on. All right, 313. We'll go back to the selfie cam so you have something fun to look at. Me, you're looking at me. I'm gonna sit down, put my glasses on, and see what's going on. We're just relaxing, although I should watch it. It's, we're at 1340, it'll click. So I don't like to just stand and stare into the kiln because not good for the eyeballs so and i don't you know i've got those glasses that protect your eyes but i cannot see they're just completely they're a little bit i just can't see i'm gonna go get them we got some time we have oh wait it's 1390 whatever all right we melted hold on maybe yeah, we're going to pull you out. I'm going to pull out and then put the other pair in. And then I'll show you the dumb glasses. Not They're not dumb. And I know I'm not on camera right now, but, you know, we're just getting, getting things done. All right, you guys are going to go in. And maybe you're not totally dry, but we're just moving forward here. All right. The second pair of earrings is in. There we go. Where did I put the glasses? Oh, yeah. All righty. So that'll be about a minute or so. I've got two pairs of glasses to wear if I were going to sit and stare in the kiln. The first one are just totally, they're ridiculous. Um, I mean, they're like, actually, they're kind of like, very stylish, but everything is green. And these I can see, I can see what's going on in the kiln, but wearing these for any length of time because they are completely green, throws off my ability to see color for about 20 minutes afterwards. So I could wear those. And then I also have these stylish, extra stylish. These are actually really good I take these when I go to the um, eye doctor for afterwards, you know, uh, because they do a really good job of blocking the sun, even from the sides. Uh, so um, these are also pretty good. So honestly, I just try not to stare directly into the kiln for more than like a second or two. So, and my eye doctor, my eyes are just fine. So. There's, oh, hold on, click, he's done. Go get him, hold on. You know what, I'm just gonna go get, time's a ticking. I don't wanna overfire these. I probably just did because I was blabbing. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, let's pull you off the hot trivets. I'm gonna pull you off the hot trivets and see, I'm not even gonna show you. We're gonna let them, we're gonna let them cool and then we're gonna see where we are because we're just at 2 p.m., which is True View. You know, I should check those out because I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, I've already spent like, I have two pairs that I just don't wear, um, but maybe I shall go buy them because um, Maybe I would wear them if I could see what was happening in the kiln. True view on enamelartsupply.com. Blue. What if I wore the blue alternating with the red? No, I don't have a red, but um, that is, yeah. So we're pretty much wrapping things up. We're just waiting for things to cool. You know what I can do while we're waiting for that to cool is, I'm gonna tell you the, the pro we have a new project that we're gonna do. I know I was, we are definitely making, Rat. We're going to be working on a three-dimensional uh, bead, 3D beads, perfectly spherical, but not in the next video because you know what? I'm still perfecting my technique of making 
uh, perfectly round beads and I don't want to make a I don't want to waste anybody's time I need to get it all set and the best practices and all of that before I do a Vimeo video about it but in the meantime let me show you what the next thing is going to be um, it is well get I don't need all of those um, I had muffin muffin if you're watching hello uh, I had a student here for three days earlier in the week and she made a beautiful little heart thing and pendant and as one does when one is teaching I also made a little heart thing here it is look how cute it is um, and I was thinking oh god I love it I love the colors I don't know if you can even see how cute it is um, so this is just a little closing a thing that I did you know because hearts were on the agenda and so I'm actually I thought it would be a really lovely bracelet so we're gonna do kind of a really sweet all the way around bracelet hey muffin it's the muffin heart bracelet um, and so thank you for following um, that's what we're going to do in the next Vimeo video. Uh, we're going to make it. It's going to be, it's not going to, we're not using this one because this one is just plain. Um, this is just cloisonne. We're going to do it as a kind of a pseudo chamlevé. We're going to use wires as our basis. So it's going to have a really, really thin wire rim that we're going to fuse in place. So that is going to be up next and that will drop on June 15th. So if you're interested in learning, and I'm going to do a kit as well. There's going to be, I'm, you know, I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm going to do a kit that includes just the colors. If you just want the colors and there'll be a kit that includes the silver and all the other accoutrements to do that. So I got a lot of my, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that video. We're going to do that. So that's going to be happening next. So that I'm really excited about it because I had, I know I have, there's a bird coming and it might be a parrot, uh, but I'm still actually working on, there's just a lot coming down the pipeline, but I thought this sweet, it's such a sweet little heart thing and it just lends itself perfectly to a bracelet. So bracelet it is. And that being said, let's go see what, I haven't even looked at that pair of earrings. Let's go see how it came out. I might have overfired it. Let's find out. Let's see. Oh, pretty. All right. Well, we've got the boring ones. Yeah, I know you're cool. Are you cool? Yes. Nice. I'm going to. Actually, they look pretty good. We're going to have to go back to the workbench. There we go. Here they are out of the kiln slightly, actually perfectly, oh, a little warm still. You can see we've got our sweet pinks are a lot more orange. It's a little bit under fried, which is perfect. I'd rather have a little bit of orange peel. You can see that. We'll get that all smoothed out in the next, but the color is looking kind of nice. So these, I like them. I think they're gonna end up being really pretty, so. That is good. And then our bases for over here, they don't look like anything because they are just ready for our blues and greens. And so that will be happening on Tuesday. So we'll do this, we'll finish these earrings together on Tuesday, noon Eastern Standard Time. And really that is, that's the whole day. So again, thank you so much for watching me and joining me for time in the studio time with Sandra. So thank you so much and have a great weekend. It's going to be wonderful. So guys, go get out, get some fresh air, look at some trees, and then get back in and do some enameling. Take care, everybody.